one does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Welcome, everyone. In this Shadowcast, we'll be delving deep into the lore of Middle-earth. And as always, here in the Land of Shadow, we'll be focusing on the darker side of Tolkien's Middle-earth. Uh, in today's video, I'll examine the second millennium of the Second Age, when Sauron, in the guise of Anatar, the Lord of Gifts, uh, seduced the elves of Eregion and forged the Rings of Power. Um, but before we begin, here is an update on the Land of Shadow. I was hoping that by today I could report that the landofshadow.com, our domain name, would redirect back to the website. However, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. It's not quite linking today, but hopefully by next week and next Friday, uh, I can report that uh, the Land of Shadow is back in the service of Mordor. Um, one thing I can say is that I have updated the uh, YouTube channel with the new Eye of Sauron that I premiered last week, um, which you can see on the website here. Um, so that's one good thing I can report. Also in today's video, I wanted to focus on the difference between the Tolkien canon and the Tolkien uh, legendarium. Uh, since today's video is focused primarily on the lore of Middle-earth. Uh, canon is anything that is written by Professor Tolkien uh, or visualized uh, through his illustrations or maps. Uh, some people differentiate the written works of Professor Tolkien or J.R.R. Tolkien with his son Christopher Tolkien. However, here in Mordor, we have made the distinction distinction or the decision to put all of that under the same umbrella. So anything written by Christopher Tolkien or illustrated by uh, Christopher Tolkien is also included in what we call the Tolkien canon. Um, the Legendarium, on the other hand, is anything else authored, illustrated, or digitally created about Middle-earth. This includes board games, uh, collectible cards, comics, video games, websites, uh, movies, and of course, streaming TV. Uh, any form of media that expands on or invents new content, content for the world of Middle-earth. Uh, in fact, some of the content here and in Mordor uh, at thelandofshadow.com uh, expands on uh, the canon and extends into Legendarium um, as we explore the darker aspects of Tolkien's world. Uh, hopefully, whenever possible, we try to label these parts of Mordor as either canon or Legendarium. So when you're looking at this content or listening to us talk about it, uh, there uh, you'll know what, what whether it's canon or legendarium. Unfortunately, <clears throat> it's usually a mix. There's usually a certain percentage of canon to a certain percentage of legendarium. And not to get too far in the weeds on this, <clears throat> but we do want to try whenever possible to clarify that to our viewers and to the readers of Mordor, the land of shadow.com. So let's go ahead and jump right into the primary focus of today's Shadowcast, which is going to be canon as we explore Sauron and the forging of the Great Rings of Power. After the War of Wrath, the fall of Morgoth, and the destruction of Beriland, there was a time of recovery, peace, and growing prosperity. This was the state of things in the first millennium of the Second Age. The elves settled in Linden, 
along what would become the western shore of Middle-earth. The kingdom of Linden grew strong under the rule of Gilgalad. The island of Numenor was gifted to the Endane by the Valar after the War of Wrath. It quickly grew into a powerful and wealthy kingdom. The descendants of Durin remained in their vast kingdom of khazad beneath the misty mountains, delving for precious gems, gold, and, of course, Mithril. Sauron, who was counted the greatest of Morgoth's servants, fled deep into the east, and for the first five hundred years of the Second Age, he remained hidden from the west. However, he was not idle. Even then he had begun to corrupt the minds of men in the east. He filled the hearts of the Easterlings and the Southrons with delusions of power and wealth. Seeing the power of Numenor grow, Sauron sought out a stronghold of his own. By the end of the first millennium of the Second Age, Sauron had discovered Orodruin, the mountain of fire in the land of Mordor. Within the cracks of doom, the seeds of a dark stratagem was born. Sauron noted that Morgoth had been weakened from dispensing his essence indiscriminately throughout Arda in order to corrupt it. Sauron sought a different, more secure path. He made plans to place the greater part of his power into an object that could not be destroyed or weakened. His plan was to give knowledge to forge rings of power for the free peoples of Middle-earth, and then to enslave them by creating one ring to rule them all. Sauron claimed the land of Mordor as his own, and began the first building of Barad-dûr. Sauron saw that the hearts of men were easily corrupted, so rather than strike the first blow against Numenor, he set his sights on the Eldar, his old enemies. Sauron understood that he could not use lies, fear, and greed to corrupt the elves. He must come as an ally, a friend, a teacher. Sauron transformed himself into the fair form of Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. He went first to Linden, but Gilgalad distrusted him and refused his gifts. In the year 1300, Celeborn and Galadriel withdrew from Eregion and traveled over the Misty Mountains to Loreland to rule the Sylvan Elves of that land. It was later renamed Lothlorien. Celebrimbor, the celebrated elven smith, became ruler of Eregion. Sauron sought out the elven smiths, and they were won over by his knowledge of fire and metal. Over the next two hundred years, the elven smiths of Eregion reached the height of their powers under the tutelage of Sauron. They began forging the great rings of power. Sauron and the elven smiths forged many great rings. Nine were gifted to the race of men in the east. Seven were made for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. However, in the year 1590 of the Second Age, Celebrimbor forged three rings of power for the elves in which Sauron played no part, because Celebrimbor had begun to distrust Anatar. In the year 1600, Sauron returned to Mordor. The construction of the Dark Tower was complete. The land of Mordor was now populated by vast armies of orcs and other dark servants of shadow birthed in the dungeons of Anatar. Sauron deemed the time was right, and in the fires of Mount Doom, he forged the one ring to rule all others. He placed within it a great part of his power. When Sauron placed the ring upon his finger, his full treachery was revealed at last. The elven rings were hidden from the Dark Lord, and in his wrath, Sauron unleashed all of his armies upon Ariel. 
Gilgalad sent Elrond as commander of his armies to wage war against Sauron. But Mordor would not be defeated. Sauron's forces overran Eriador, and Eregion was laid waste. The gates of Moria were shut. Elrond took the surviving Noldor north and founded the haven of Imladris in the hidden valley of Rivendell. Just when Sauron believed that victory was within his grasp, Tar Minister, king of Numenor, sent a great fleet of ships north to the shores of Linden. Sauron, unaware of this vast army laying in wait, was defeated. His armies were driven out of Eriador, and Sauron was forced back to the lands of Mordor. In the dark tower of Badr-dûr, Sauron brooded over his sudden and unexpected defeat. Even so, the power of the elves had been greatly diminished. Many kings of men were now ensnared into the service of the Dark Lord, and the dwarves were now in high. The ring gave him vast powers to sway the peoples of Middle-earth. Not all was lost. Sauron then turned his thought to Numenor and began to make his plans. Well, everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive into the lore of Middle-earth uh, as we focused on Sauron and the forging of the rings of power. I have to admit, I'm very excited about uh, what Amazon is going to do with the Rings of Power uh, and how they will expand on the legendarium of uh, Tolkien's uh, Middle-earth. Um, let's just hope that they do justice to the words of Professor Tolkien uh, and give us a show worth fighting for. In our next Shadowcast, I plan to take you on a tour of the Dark Tower of Mordor. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I hope you'll continue to join me on my journey through the Land of Shadow. Uh, and I'll see you next time in the Well of the Eye, high atop the Dark Tower.